This story happened back in 1997. I was nine years old at the time. One night, me and my sister decided to sneak out at night and ride our bikes around the neighborhood. We swung back up a road we hadn't visited before. It was a very untouched area. It was really spooky because we heard tales of ghosts in the trees and witches living in the nearby homes. There was very little light on this road. It was pretty old and the lights that were there never got fixed. It was around 11 p.m. at night. There was next to no moon, so it was just like extra dark out. We decided to head back home when we heard the clatter of clawed paws on concrete. We both turned around to see where the noise came from and caught sight of something that to this day makes my blood run cold. In the dark behind us, about 20 feet away, was one pair of glowing red eyes, then two, then three. From the darkness came a growl. Our first instinct was a good one, run. Both of us slammed into full power, stepping through the gears. Within five seconds, we were pushing fourth gear and topping 30 miles per hour. We glanced back once to see all three pairs of those eyes, and we could hear their breaths. We skidded into the front lawn, off the bikes, and jumped into an open window, only to hear claws clattering at the window. We did not sleep that night. I once spent a month with my cousins at my grandma's house. It was August. I was the oldest, 15 years old. We stayed up telling scary stories often, but one night we decided to make a campfire out in the backyard. My grandma's house is in a rural suburb. The neighbors aren't too far away when you're driving, but in the backyard, it's nothing but thick forest with man-made paths throughout it. Each house is on a hill, so only part of the basement was actually underground. That comes into play later. So, we're on the east side of my grandmother's yard in a small patch of open land. You couldn't see the neighboring yards from there. There was probably three quarters of a mile to each side of us that belonged to my grandma. It was about 11 at night, and we were playing truth or dare after telling scary stories. My one cousin dared me and another cousin to go walk through the paths for 10 minutes or so. I said yes. I wasn't easily scared and rather level-headed. But my cousin was a bit more hesitant. We didn't bring a flashlight because it wasn't pitch dark yet. We're walking through the paths for about five minutes until the fire disappeared from sight. We decided to turn around. Between us and my grandmother's house was a large dog-like creature hunched over with its front hands an inch from the ground. What I remember most was how its eyes were so bright. It was a humanoid dog shape with a human-like head but a dog-like body with human hands and feet. It looked right at us. I was paralyzed with fear. Fortunately, it dashed away the opposite direction from us, towards a creek that ran through the yard. My cousin and I screamed. Our other cousins and grandma ran over to us. I don't remember much here because I was really disoriented. I couldn't think properly. The next thing I remember, I woke up in bed. All the kids slept in the basement in a big room with sliding glass doors to the outside. The room was on the side of the basement that wasn't underground. My bed was pressed against a big glass window. I could see my cousins playing outside down below. I put on a jacket and ran outside to join them. 
When I got out there, I could tell they weren't playing, but rather running to get my grandma. Her dogs, both of them, were dead, ripped apart. We went to bed early that night. I woke up at around 2 in the morning because I felt something hit my head. My cousins were all sitting on the double bed opposite me on the other side of the room. They were being quiet, staring at me. My one cousin nodded his head toward the window. I froze. I didn't want to look. I turned my head slightly to the side and I saw a really messed up looking face pressed to the window, gaping eyes looking down at me. I screamed and bolted. My grandma called the police after I told her what happened, but they didn't find anything. I went home after that, and I've never been back to my grandma's house during the night again. I decided to join my best friend Karen for a three-day stay at her grandmother's house on the reservation. Her grandmother lives near a place called Tuba City, Arizona. It's in the middle of nowhere. We go to college together and I was interested to know a little bit more about Navajo tradition. It was pretty chill the first day we stayed there. Nothing out of the ordinary. But then her grandma said that a stray dog came out of nowhere and would not leave. So we looked at it and it did act kind of strange. It was a little ugly too. It was black, had a shaggy coat, looked like a mix between a German shepherd and a lab. That night, we were watching a movie in the living room with the curtains wide open. Grandma was in the kitchen cooking dinner. Now next to the window is a medium-sized bookshelf where the DVDs were kept. Karen went to put back a DVD we just watched and she freaked out because that stray black dog was staring at us through the window. It stood on top of the wood box outside. That wasn't something normal dogs do. Karen opened the door to yell at it. I ran off behind the shed. Karen and I went to Tuba City to get some groceries. When we came back, the dog was nowhere to be found. Later that evening, Grandma went to visit some people, so it was just Karen and me. It was around 5 o'clock when we heard someone trying to open the front door. We both looked out. We hadn't heard any cars, no dogs barking. We looked out the living room window and saw that that dog was trying to open the door with its paws. Two paws wrapped around the brass doorknob. The dog stood on its hind legs. I thought that was weird, but I wasn't really freaked out. Karen was. She opened the door and chased it off. Karen's grandma came back later and Karen told her what happened. Grandma didn't like what she heard. So that night we got ready to sleep. We slept in the spare bedroom, had two beds. There was one window with the curtains open just a little bit. When we turned off the light, we heard a sound coming from on top of the roof. Pitter-patter footsteps, scratching sounds, panting. It then sounded like whatever it was jumped off onto the large plastic water barrel in the yard. At first, we heard what sounded like barking, but as it grew louder, we weren't quite sure. All of a sudden, something was running around the house barking. Yeah, it was no dog. This barking sounded human. It was like a deep male voice barking, like it knew that we knew it was not a dog. Woof, woof. Arf, 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 just like that. Like it was fake barking. We then heard panting again by the window. Karen opened the curtains to look out, and there was the stray dog on its hind legs looking into our bedroom. It had what I thought were two black holes in its neck, where another pair of eyes twinkled. 
The paws were deformed looking hands with overgrown, thick, sharp fingernails. Karen and I both screamed. Grandma came running through the door and she saw it. The first thing she did was grab ashes from the fireplace and then she loaded three shells into the shotgun from under her bed. She blessed herself in Navajo and then went outside to shoot whatever it was. The next day they called a medicine man to come over. He prayed over everyone with cedar smoke and an eagle feather. He blessed the place. He also made us eat bitter herbs called eagle's gall or something, and he gave me an arrowhead. Apparently I needed to carry one for protection. So far it seems to work pretty well. The medicine man said that the dog was a skinwalker. It had the body of a stray dog, but it made an illusion so we wouldn't know it wasn't a real one. He also said that they tend to harm people by using some sort of human bone straw to spit at someone. Apparently doctors can't detect it. But that day, the medicine man pulled a piece of human skull out of Karen's grandma's right shoulder. It was pretty big, about two inches long, a centimeter thick. It was real because we watched him pull it out of her. The whole ordeal was so intense. 